Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, also known as the 7th best Asian Canadian travel hacking YouTube channel, according to my mom. And today's topic is all about hidden city ticketing, what it is, why it exists, some potential challenges as well as risks, and most importantly, how can you get a cheap ticket with this secret hidden technique. But before we begin, I would ask you if it's possible, click the like button beneath so it will help out the channel greatly, but it also boosts my self-confidence if you want that. And we dive right in with what is a hidden city ticket. Hidden city ticketing is just a more advanced version of throwaway ticketing. And throwaway ticketing is just basically not using any portion of the ticket that you have bought. So for example, if you bought a round trip ticket with the airline but you only intend to use one way, then it is a form of throwaway ticketing. And hidden city ticketing is basically if you want to go from A to B but it is way too expensive. So you instead buy a ticket from A to C while transiting in B. You just simply get off the airplane at B and walk away from the airport and pretend nothing ever happens. So you don't board your plane from B to C, then you simply got a cheaper version of A to B direct flight. Let me show you an example. This ticket from Vancouver to Toronto on the direct Air Canada flight is one of the most expensive ones out there. It costs nearly $650 and it is absolutely not worth the money. So instead of buying a ticket directly from Vancouver to Toronto, I changed the destination from Toronto into London, yes, an entire ocean away, and suddenly it is 60-70% to 70 cheaper than just a direct flight. So instead of continuing all the way to the United Kingdom, I just simply have to get off the airplane at Toronto and walk away from the airport. And suddenly, I will save more than 70% of the money. Now you must be thinking, this is absolutely bonkers. Why would an airline charge two flights 70% less than just one single flight? Well, you see, this is not all about fuselage usage and fuel burn. This is about economics. You see, an airline, usually on the direct route, they have much more market power so they can charge more, while on a one-stop option, the airline will lose most of its edge. Just to give you an example, on the direct flight from Vancouver to London, the only consistent daily operator is British Airways, so they can charge much more because they are the only provider of non-stop flights. But suddenly, if I want to change my mind and say I want to go to Frankfurt, British Airways have lost all of its competitive advantages because it can only offer a one-stop option through London. While it has to compete with KLM, with Iceland Air, American Airlines, United, Delta Air Canada, you name it. So it has to lower the price considerably in order to stay competitive in the market. So it creates a really interesting phenomenon that a flight to Frankfurt through London is much cheaper than a direct flight to London. But the airlines expect you to be a normal, sane person. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine being sane, right? <laughs> yeah, and the same person will type in the destination they actually want to go instead of a random place, so in the hopes that they can transit through London, their actual destination. If you think it is all rainbows and unicorns from now, then you are sorely mistaken. There are a lot of restrictions as well as risks that comes with hidden city ticketing technique, and I'll tell you all about them before I tell you how you can book one of them. And the first biggest restriction is that this only applies for one-way flights. This is because once you do not show up for any segment of your entire trip, the entire itinerary and the ticket gets cancelled by the airline. This is one of their ways to deter people using the throwaway ticket technique. And the second is that you cannot check in any luggage. This is because most of the luggages will get checked all the way through to your final destination that you actually do not intend to visit. So if you get off halfway, then you're saying goodbye to your luggages for good. And third, it's more important now during the pandemic lockdown in 2021. So if you are watching this from 2037 when finally all of the border restrictions have gone for good, then of course you don't have to worry this as much. This is because all of these flights, the airlines will think that you are actually going to your final destination and do not tell them that you only intend to use a portion of them. If you tell any of the airline employees that, they will immediately cancel your ticket and you'll lose out even more. So for example, if I show up at Vancouver Airport and on that ticket I just showed you that go to London through Toronto, even though I only want to go to Toronto, I should not tell anyone and I will pretend that I will go to United Kingdom. But now during the pandemic, that means much, much more restrictions. I need to show them my passport, I need to show them I'm eligible to enter the country, that means probably quarantine hotel, PCR test results, and vaccination status whatsoever, right? Even though on a normal flight from Vancouver to Toronto, I don't even need to bring a passport. So you need to be very, very careful, especially right now, to pick your final destination that's supposedly fake, but it can actually matter a lot when you're boarding your first flight. 
And the fourth point is the risk of a rerouting. Let's just say your first flight gets delayed or canceled for whatever reason. The airlines will just say, hey, let me be a helpful little chap and reroute you instead of from A to B to C, I can route you from A to D to C. You still get your place at C because the contract you sign with the airline when you buy the ticket is that they need to transport you from A to C. It doesn't say through where, through whatever airports. So they still fulfill the terms of the contract, but you will be losing out for good because neither D nor C are the places that you actually want to go. But this is just a risk that you cannot mitigate. So cross your fingers and pray to whatever deity that you believe in. There's no maintenance issue or a thunderstorm. And the fifth point is like a boogeyman that a lot of the frequent traveler parents use to scare their children to sleep. This is the risk of an airline catching you doing this kind of thing. I think it's mostly overrated. Sure, Lufthansa has sued a few people doing hidden city tickets, but all of these cases have been dismissed. Yeah, and a lot of the airlines will simply say, okay, since I cannot sue you, I will punish you internally. They will basically try to restrict your access to your frequent traveler program, take a few thousand miles off your account, or suspend your account for good. But for a normal traveler, you shouldn't worry too much about this. Yeah, I've heard of some urban myth like travel horror story that the American Airlines will send, send special agents waiting for you at the jet bridge when you're disembarking your first flight, and they will personally escort you to your next flight that you actually do not want to take. I have never been able to verify that. And even if that happens, you can always have a spontaneous bathroom trip for three and a half hours, right? I'm so sorry that I painted a rather grim picture about hidden city ticketing for you, but actually a lot of these risks can be mitigated and a lot of the restrictions can be bypassed. Let's just say the one-way ticketing example. Uh, instead of buying a one-way ticket and throw it away, you can actually still abuse the hidden city technique on a round-trip flight with a little bit of creative ingenuity. Let's just say you live in London and you want to go to New York. Instead of buying a very expensive direct round-trip flight from London to New York, you can buy a cheaper flight from Frankfurt to New York through London. And what you'll have to do is actually fly from London to Frankfurt on a budget airline a few days before, and then munch on the Frankfurters in the German cities for a few days. And then you fly from Frankfurt to London to New York as if nothing happened. And then on the way back, from New York back to London, you do not show up from your flight from London to Frankfurt. And problem solved. You still manage to save a lot of money with the hidden city technique, and you get a few days in Germany as an extra bonus. Well, as for the luggage situation, there are three major ways to bypass it. And the first one is simply due to the nature of a lot of the immigration policies of some of the countries. For example, United States and Mexico. When you're flying internationally into these countries, you are forced to collect your luggage and then recheck it at a check-in counter. And interestingly, that will create a very good opportunity for you to run away from the airport with your luggage. And then, for the second situation, you simply need to build in a very long overnight layover at your desired transit place. And what you will do is to convince the agents that you need your seventh pair of socks in the check-in luggage when you are transiting in a transit hotel. And the airlines will usually accommodate you by checking the luggage only to your transit point. And you simply do not show up for your flight the next day, and it's all good. And the last one is to use the fact that some cities have multiple airports in the same region. So what a lot of the airlines will sell you a flight that into a specific airport, and then three or five hours later, you have to fly from another airport onto your next leg. So it is your responsibility to collect your luggage at the old arrival airport and then bring it to the new departure airport of your next flight. And guess what? You simply collect your luggage and you do not show up for the next flight. Problem solved. And as for the airlines catching you, it is generally not that much of a risk. But still, just to play on the safer side, I would recommend you not to associate any of your frequent flyer program with any of the ticket that you have used the hidden city technique on. So the airlines will be really hard pressed to verify that if you are actually the person who abused the system or not. Problem solved, right? Well, it is really not that like that. Because um, it is never a zero chance of something going wrong. Because the airlines can always crack down on this kind of thing. So the risk is never zero. But let me just assure you that this is one of the safer ways of gaming the systems out there. And with that all out of the way, I can finally tell you how you can book a hidden city technique ticket. Let's go. Due to hidden city ticketing being rather a highly publicized travel hacking technique, there's actually a special website that can help you book these kind of ticket called Skiplag. You can see here by booking a flyer from Seattle to Los Angeles with a transit to Reno, I managed to save a few dollars than buying a direct flight from Seattle to Los Angeles.
But the problem with skip lag is that it is not very comprehensive in its searches. So if you really want the desired results, you will need to use our good friend Google Flights and manually check for each possibility. This can be made easier if your desired destination is a major hub of a big airline. So you can click right here to pick a specific airline and most of the time it will force the ticket to be a transit through your desired location which is the hub of this very airline. You can see here by restricting it to Air Canada, I'll be searching through the entire North America and arguably the entire world by forcing a transit in Toronto, Air Canada's major hub. And you can see here, I managed to find a cheap flight to London with a transit to Toronto this way. Another good way of using Google Flights is that you can actually specify which location that you want to transit in. But with this feature enabled, you cannot type and search based on the map. So you will simply have to type in each airport that you think might be cheaper based on past experiences or perhaps just a general search. And you can see here, I'm trying all kinds of possibility with a forced transit in Toronto and managed to find the location that will give me the lowest price, which is London. And as usual, the far more advanced search engine, ITA Matrix, comes to the rescue for anyone who wants to get down to the nitty gritty of it. By clicking the advanced control button, you open a special panel that you can dedicate almost any kind of routing restriction into the flight search engine. Simply type in the airport that you want to transit in and it will display all of the available tickets with a transit in your desired airports. And here you can see it managed to pull up every single possible combination from Vancouver to London through Toronto. And I can even pick what time I want to depart from Vancouver. The problem with ITA Matrix is that you cannot book flights directly with them. So there's actually a special plugin in Chrome that have linked in the video description down below. You will need to install it in your Chrome browser before you are able to book your flights with it. Now that you have learned all of the basics regarding hidden city ticketing, I hope you put it to a good use. And let me know in the comments if you managed to score a good deal using this technique, okay? And of course, there are a lot of the other advanced knowledge out there, such as the fact that you can call the airline to legally drop any segment in a flight as long as it involves Italy due to a special mandate issued by an Italian court a few years ago. But that is another story for another time. If you really like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you want, click the subscribe button beneath me in order to hear more travel stories or travel hacking techniques. And of course, if you want to look for more videos, you can check out this video I made about another travel hacking technique I came up myself. Or if you want to see the entire travel hacking playlist, click right here. And I'll see you around.